So again, here uh, we have the probe. Um, I have an eighth inch stylus in here. So the diameter of this uh, bit uh, basically is an eighth of an inch diameter. So what this is going to pick up is uh, no more detail than what an eighth inch ball nose cutter would be able to cut. So the object that I've uh, selected to probe is a, it's a picture frame uh, with Donald Duck on it. Just kind of zoom in on the camera a little bit so we could see what that looks like. Um, there we go. Um, so there is some detail uh, on this frame that a eighth inch uh, stylus really just isn't going to pick up all that well. But we're going to see that in the preview and we'd see that just the same as if we were cutting with a eighth inch ball nose. Um, so we're going to use this uh, frame for two separate items. We're going to create a, a, a 3D probing, which we'll kind of briefly show that, uh, at least getting it started. Uh, we won't sit around and wait for it all to be finished. Uh, because I did it last night overnight, and when I woke up in the morning, it was done and had a file. Uh, total probing time, I think, was like 12 hours uh, for this. Uh, so 3D uh, pro probing does uh, take a little bit more. First thing I'm going to do is uh, run the probe. Before I do that, I've already done this once, and what we see on the screen is a combination of three separate scanned probe files. Um, I have the inside uh, section of the frame, the outside edge, and then the three-dimensional model uh, of this. Uh, so here is uh, what the three-dimensional looks like. I haven't done any tool pathing or anything on this, but this is uh, what has been brought in. Now this isn't directly from the, the probe. I did do a little bit of hand um, uh, work using Aspire to smooth things out a little bit. So I'm just switched over to VCarve Pro briefly to look at the 3D view here to see how it actually came in. So uh, we can see that uh, some smoothing does need to be um, done and the scan resolution could have been closer and tighter together which would have um, brought in uh, some, some more. And we're going to look at the uh, scan resolutions of both. Um, I may even, uh, between now and Thursday, get another chance to uh, scan this uh, once more, only using a 16th inch stylus, which uh, will then really pick up all the detail and be a much smoother scan. Um, so, Let's just start off by uh, talking about how the probe functions and works. So right now, uh, you'll see on the red position window that we have our input switch. Uh, input number one is lit up right now. That is because, well, two reasons. One is because I have the probe plugged in, or two is I have the Z0 plate plugged in and the alligator clip clipped to the plate. Now, if you're running the spin or the uh, probe, you definitely want to have the Z0 plate unplugged or not triggered. Um, and the reason for that is, again, it works on a normally closed circuit where our Z0 plate works on a normally open circuit. So if the Z0 plate is always being held closed through the probing uh, scanning process, the switch will never open. Uh, so I'm just going to trigger the, uh, the, the probe, and that's just moving that stylus a little bit, and we see that input number one turns off. Um, so in any direction, it is going to trigger, and then also in the upwards direction. So it is a three-dimensional probe. It works in all three, three axes and dimensions. So uh, for an edge tracing, uh, the way it works, and that's what we're gonna walk through first. Uh, the first time I did this, I did it with a higher resolution, this time I'm going to do it with a lower resolution and we'll compare the two. Uh, the edge tracing does not take as long as the three-dimensional tracing, uh, but basically what is going to happen, we're going to move the Z down to where the first move in the Y direction, which is towards the back, that the probe itself or the stylus of the probe is going to trigger against the edge of our part that we're wanting to trace. 
And once that is triggered, it's going to back up slightly and do this arc move and back into the part and work its way completely around that part. So we do have an outside and an inside, and we're going to uh, save this out as two separate files. Um, so we also want to look at the X and Y uh, locations of zeros. Uh, so the first time it's going to move uh, both X and Y to the zero, zero location. So I'm going to type in M2, M2, zero comma zero. Um, which now moves X and Y to that location. Um, just uh, so we can understand what is going to happen here, I'm going to re-specify that zero, zero location and say that it is not, that is not zero, zero. I'm going to use the value access locations and I'm going to say that that is 12 inches in the X. If you don't know this command, it's a very useful command. It's saying, it's, I'm not zeroing anything out. I'm just saying that the location that it's sitting right now is 12 inches in the X. So I'm going to say okay to that. And we see that the X value does go to 12 inches. Hopefully when we go to import this into VCAR Pro, you'll see why I did that. So I did have one scanned already at this current location and we'll be able to see how they get brought in side by side. So the first thing that I know the probe is going to do or need to do is it is going to need to make its first motion in the Y direction. So I'm going to use the keypad to move X and Y over to the bottom section of the picture frame here, and then move the Z down to where it's a little bit above the table, or at least to a location where I know it is going to come in contact with the edge of this frame as it makes its way all the way around. So we type the letter K, opens up the keypad, And just moving uh, X and Y, doing a page down. And if you don't know that fixed distance right there, I just type the letter D. Uh, brings up this little box right here, uh, the fixed distance. So that means that every time I do a page up or a page down or any axis move, the axis is going to make a step in that specified uh, distance. So it's a little bit finer control over um, the motion and how it works. So I'm gonna close the keypad and knowing now that I am in a position where that first move is gonna make contact with what we want to trace. I'm gonna to go to the tools menu and then to the copy machine, which brings open a, another utility program that's going to ask a few questions uh, of what we want. Um, so we are doing a trace of an outline um, of a two-dimensional object. The probe that we have is a shopbot probe uh, or another normally closed uh, method of probing. Uh, so the reason why we have this option is uh, for edge tracing. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a, a, a the digitizing probe itself. Uh, you have a Z0 plate, and uh, you can go and get yourself some of that uh, aluminum foil uh, duct tape um, and uh, put this duct tape around the outside of your part and then uh, trace it uh, that way. Um, I might have a piece of aluminum or something floating around that we might get to test that with uh, towards the end of this session to see how that works. So, right now it is a Shopbot probe, normally closed. The format that I want. Now, this is uh, the part that gets a little bit confusing uh, because it is not the same for a two-dimensional object versus a three-dimensional object. If we are edge tracing, uh, like we're doing here, we're just getting the profile of the frame. We, we want it to be a DXF polyline. When we're doing the three-dimensional tracing, when we uh, do the three-dimensional over top of Donald himself, we are going to create a shopbot part file. We will then later be able to convert that part file into a 3D surface that we can import into VCARF Pro. So important to, to know, um, at least with the tracing, it doesn't take that long to realize and 
find out later that we should have selected something else. But 3D probing takes a long time to do it. And you get to the end and you did it as DXF points and now you have a file that, unless you have the correct software, isn't going to do you much good. So three-dimensional remember, shot bot part file, the first option. For a two-dimensional object is the last option, a DXF uh, file. So with that option selected, I'm gonna click the button that says copy. We are then asked for a scan resolution. The minimum scan resolution in an edge tracing is the 0.1. So I'm gonna change that now to be a 0.25, so a quarter inch scan resolution. And we'll be able to compare the differences. I already scanned this, the one model that we saw that was already open was scanned in at the 0.1 setting. The minimum or safe uh, maximum Y axis um, just needs to be a big number or a number bigger than the distance that the Y needs to move to be able to trigger on the, the part. Um, so I have, I have 18 inches travel on the, the desktop here, so that's even more than that. So I could specify that uh, 18 there, but as long as it's greater than the part that you're wanting to scan, that is good. The move speed at which it moves around is uh, going to be at two inches a second. Um, I've also modified uh, kind of my ramping values, uh, the acceleration, deceleration, uh, a little bit to help speed uh, the, uh, the process up. And I will uh, point that out after we run this scan. So with that done, I'm gonna select finish. And now it's asking and saying that we need to pick a name. Um, so the first one that we did was the uh, scan uh, here, that's at the higher resolution. So I'm just gonna put an underscore low. So save that file and asking, am I ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Um, now, it's asking me if I wanna open up the keypad uh, to move to a, the starting point. Uh, and uh, well, I knew it was gonna ask me this question, so I've already done that. So I'm gonna say no to this message. And another warning that I will uh, mention is, uh, it's a good idea if you have um, the key uh, disconnect switch uh, to be able to in, turn that key to disengage and turn it off. Um, or if you have a port -a cable router, now would be a good time to hit the switch that's on top of the router to off. Uh, just to make sure that uh, if you do happen to get the message to press OK uh, to start the spindle, you don't want to press OK to that. Uh, we have a wire connected here in you know, a $400 probe there that we do not want to spin. So uh, definitely don't say OK to that message if for some reason you do get that message. So I'm gonna say, uh, okay to this message, and now it's, am I ready to go? Yes. So I'm gonna say, okay, and it's going to work its way around. Notice that, that input number one in the red position screen is uh, clicking on and off. Uh, so going off every time it makes contact with the edge of the part. Every time it makes that contact, or every time the input number one goes off, that is when we are recording the location of the X and Y now.
So as it made its way completely around, it, it stops at the location of where it first made contact. Uh, so now what we have is a file that is a DXF file. And uh, yeah, the talking with the probe, I, I wasn't thinking that was going to work so well. Um, so I apologize if that made a lot of noise. Uh, but basically what I was explaining as it was probing was that every time that it makes contact, you see the input switch number one on the uh, control software going on and off. Every time that it is off, like it is right now, the probe is triggered or touching the edge of the part. And every time the switch goes off or we make contact is when we, the probing routine is recording the current X and Y value at the point of contact. Uh, so Z is not being recorded in the probe, uh, probing routine here for the 2D tracing at all. Uh, so it's just the X, Y uh, points. So I'm going to open up the keypad and move the probe off of the part, remembering at this point we are in contact with it, and I do have to move the Y in the negative direction. So you notice as soon as I move off of that part, input number one, the light uh, came back on. So I'm going to open up uh, over into Aspire, uh, where I have already imported uh, the first uh, scanning that I did. Uh, now, if you remember uh, what I did in the software, I used that VA command to set the location, which was 00, zero to uh, the location of 12. So uh, I'm going to import that in here. Now, where you might expect it to come in around here, well, where it's really going to come into is somewhere over here, which is at the X location of 12. So it is scanned in exactly to the same coordinate system that the ShopBot uses. So to bring this in and import this in, I'm going to go to Import Vectors. And there is the scanned low resolution that we just saved. Let's say open to that. And there it has been brought into the um, right where we had it uh, placed and uh, originally drew it. Now, I did modify and move uh, this, this one around already, uh, but just so we could see and get an understanding of what happens, I'm going to import the original version that I did uh, earlier uh, before I started the, uh, uh, the video session here to show where that was brought in. So I'm going to do the same exact thing, import the vectors and do the original one and select open. And we see that it is uh, brought here. So remember, I did that VA. I only modified the X value location. I did not do the Y. So just to uh, know and understand how this works, I'm going to select the object over here of what we just scanned, and I'm going to move it exactly 12 inches to the left. And I'm going to do that by using the so object size, and I am going to move it a relative distance, which means I am moving it relative to its current location, and I want to move it to the left, so that is a negative 12 inches, and selecting apply. Now notice that it moved over and directly on top of the other one that we had there. Uh, but you see that it's slightly different. Um, and, and the reason that it's different is that resolution that, we, uh, that I chose. So the first one that I did, uh, which is the one that is not selected, was a scan resolution of 0.1. The second one that I scanned had a scan resolution of 0.25. So I'm going to undo that move. I just moved it just to show you the location change there. Uh, but what we want to take a look at now is all the points that make this up. Uh, so if, like I just said, that every time the probe makes contact, we record that point. So basically, every time it touched that surface, it created a node at that point. So at that point, all we have are lines that are connecting the dots as it goes around. So what might look like a smooth curve really is not. It is a bunch of nodes that had line segments, uh, straight line segments uh, to make that shape. So to clean this up, uh, it really should come into the option to um, fit curves to vector. 
And I'm going to convert that to a Bezier curve there and uh, select preview so we can see what is going on and OK. So now we can see that it kind of smoothed things out, a little less nodes, and uh, we don't have those straight line segments anymore. But I am going to undo uh, that just so we can compare the amount of nodes from the lower resolution to the higher resolution. So just to uh, bring that over, I'm going to make a copy of that. I'm doing that, I'm holding the control key down as I, I drag that over here. So uh, I just made a duplicate copy. So the one that is selected now is the higher resolution, and this one is the lower resolution. So having them selected, turning on node editing, that we see the one on the right has uh, a lot more nodes than the one on the left. The greater the resolution uh, as the one on the right, the longer it will take to uh, probe. Um, in this case, I probably did not need to pick up um, as much resolution as I did on the right side, uh, especially since uh, you know we have the, the basic shape here and we do have that option to be able to fit the curves to the uh, vectors that uh, makes things uh, a lot easier to use. Um, so, what we're going to take a look at next is how did I get the inside shape um, in there? Well, that is a separate uh, file and a separate probe. So I'm going to go back to the ShopBot software, open up the keypad. I'm just going to do a page up, move it over to the inside center, and again, move the Z down. The, the program routine, as we remember, did give us that location or give us the option to be able to uh, drop it down into that place. So yes, um, I, I would um, draw, uh, and instead of uh, calculating all those points, really the only part of uh, the shape that I probably care about is this outside edge here where uh, Donald is sitting. Um, so I might uh, come in and node edit and remove all of these points here and then just draw a circle uh, in there and do a little node editing and use the scissor tool to uh, trim some of that away. And we're going to look at that on um, this Thursday and how to uh, take these files, combine them all together in tool pattern. Even though we are combining now, uh, we're going to take a little bit more depth on how we could combine and also tool path um, this option, uh, all of this. So, I'm back in ShopBot 3. I've moved the Z up, over, and down into the inside of the frame. I am not going to re-zero or relocate X and Y zero. I need to have it the same X, Y zero or reference zero as I did when I did the outside of this frame. Um, or I need to know exactly what I have shifted that off uh, to be able to move it later. Uh, but right now, uh, I haven't redefined x, y, zero location. It, x, y, zero is still way out in a location that it cannot get to because the, the lower left corner here is really sitting at 12 inches. So going back into tools, copy machine. And we have, um, again, just going through all the same options as we've done before and selecting copy. This time, just for uh, giggles, let's see what happens if I increase the resolution even more to 0.5. Um, and I'm going to go finish. And again, inside, I should really call those a very low, but I'll just call it low resolution and save. This time, I will not talk or, well, at least try not to talk when uh, it's probing this way. I will be patient and wait. Um, so, am I ready to copy now? Yes. No, I do not need to open up the keypad. I'm already there. And I will say OK and OK.
All right, we can see that went a little bit faster around the inside, um, but we're going to see what that uh, resolution uh, detail change. And, and this is the case where I probably wouldn't really have scanned this at all, um, other than um, maybe to get a little bit of the inside of Donald here, or it may be the reason we might need a little bit higher uh, scan resolution. Anyway, let's take a look at this by going to import vectors in the inside low and selecting open. Uh, it's still somewhat uh, smooth and clean. Um, node edit, we see we have far fewer nodes even than what we did on this uh, option here when we had a quarter inch, but uh, we could really still use the fit curves to vector uh, to smooth that out. Um, but notice that we really didn't pick up too much detail uh, around uh, his, uh, his hat and cap there. Take a look at the original lower uh, value um, resolution. You get a little bit more detail uh, wrapped around here. Um, but anyway, uh, that is uh, kind of the scan resolutions uh, on how to bring those in. And again, I could select this option here and use the option to uh, fit curves to vector or curve fit. So as you see, it did import and brought it into the model at the same location as the reference location of the machine. So as long as you do not relocate X, Y, or Z, or really not Z in this case, but X or Y, the files, no matter where you have them probed in, um, are going to be having the same reference point as the machine itself. So the next thing that uh, we're going to look at is how to 3D duplicate uh, trace this. Um, I'll, I'll let it go a couple passes, uh, but I'll, I'll stop it because it is a, a long process uh, for uh, scanning this. Um, the way we have to think about um, 3D scanning is the, the envelope of which it fits in. Uh, so we need to know the, the X and the Y value or the, the border value of that um, to be able to enter this in. So I'm going to have a uh, value of two and a half inches. So just to uh, see where this is, uh, two and a half is right at the bottom of his, his foot here. Uh, and then over here is really right on the edge of this, this hole right there. So the reason why I am uh, marking this out on the table is because it's also where I need to have the starting X and Y value uh, to make sure that when it scans my value of two and a half that I'm entering in here, or really one and seven eighths that I'm entering in, that it is going to make that full travel. Um, so we are again one and seven eighths in the X, or I'm sorry, yeah, one and seven eighths in the X, and then two and a half in the Y. Uh, so we'll try to remember that. Uh, we'll see if the defaults uh, from when I originally scanned this are still there. So I'm going back into the ShopBot 3 control software, opening up the keypad and uh, backing that probe off of the switch and off of the part. I'm going to now move the Z up and move the X and Y over to this uh, lower left corner. <coughs> Remembering to move the Z up high enough to make sure that uh, I don't collide that probe. And this is a, another good um, spot to be able to use the fixed distance. Uh, so I just typed in the letter D and uh, making sure that that is uh, roughly over top of that dot that I measured out, which is going to be one and seven eighths in the X direction by two and a half in the Y. So with that closed, I am going to uh, re zero X and Y at this location. So I'm going to do a Z2. 
because we are able to remove these parts around within uh, VCARF Pro. I just like to have, when I bring the model in, uh, having it close to uh, the zero, zero uh, location. So once uh, I am in position and uh, ready, I'm going to open up Tools Copy Machine, the same as we did for the 2D tracing. Only this time, I'm going to select the option for to create a 3D uh, object from the file. Again, it's the ShopBot probe. And remember, the format you want is a ShopBot part file. This is a, uh, a file that uh, we could really just, after this probing, turn around and right away cut this same exact file and it will come out the exact same spot, exact same location, as long as we cut it with the same diameter bit as what we used as the stylus. But it is nice to bring into VCARF Pro to uh, reorient it, move it around, maybe smooth it out a little bit if you have a spire, you know, crop things and uh, readjust and combine with other two dimensional objects. We'll see more of that on Thursday. So with that done, let's select copy. We have a um, much uh, more uh, options here. Uh, so again, the pattern size, that is the one and seven eighths in the X and two and a half in the Y. The safe clearance is Z. I don't want to have that very high, but I want to make sure it's high enough to be able to clear the, the model uh, or the part. So I'm going to enter in a safe clearance of 0.5 with a max probing depth of zero. Um, so right now, um, I really probably should have zeroed Z at that point. Um, that's it's all right, um, we're only 30 thousandths above. Um, and the reason for that is uh, if we are not touching anything at the zero value, those points are not recorded. Uh, and we'll see that in uh, VCARF when we uh, bring this in or when we get to that point. So again, I probably should have had uh, re-zeroed the Z and it, I guess, technically could be up a little bit higher than where it is right now. But since we are importing this into uh, VCARF Pro or Aspire, we're able to uh, modify it from there. So the X step over, this is the scan resolution. Uh, so the higher the resolution is here, the uh, more detail or the smoother, yeah, I, I shouldn't say detail because um, the scan resolution or the step over really doesn't have do a lot with the detail. Um, the detail is coming from the stylus diameter and a little bit from the step over, uh, but the uh, step over is going to contribute to how smooth our finished scan model uh, is going to be. So, um, it, you know, 10 thousandths, I would have gotten a much smoother scan if I uh, dropped that down to five thousandths. Um, and like I said, I'll try to scan it again uh, before Thursday uh, so we can see the difference between a higher resolution scan and uh, what I have here. Um, and, and see that the X and Y move speed, well, I'm going to put in four, uh, but not that we'll ever get to four because it's going to make a series of several thousand small moves. Um, you know, small moves being every 10 thousandths of an inch, it's gonna be stepping, tick, 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 and checking the input switch number one. So with those such as small quick moves, uh, we're never really getting up to four inches per second anyway, um, but just having that as a high value uh, does help speed things up a little bit. Um, the Z-axis move speed, let's uh, bump that up to two. The switch is number one. Uh, the surface tolerance, uh, that's, this is a little trickier to understand um, and basically leaving it default uh, is good for the majority of the time. If you are doing a gradual uh, slope, if any uh, thing that you're probing has a slope that is uh, like a ramp, uh, you might need to increase that because it tends to and may want to kind of get stuck in that one place or uh, probe in that one place, uh, which seems like a long time. But anyway, uh, basically leave that one instead as default. The probe diameter 
is an eighth of an inch, and I will select finish. It asks me to pick a name. I will say this is a 3D. Am I ready? Yes, I think I'm ready. <laughs> so the Z just moved up uh, to the safe height of 0.5, which is our max um, safe height that we entered in. And now it's asking the same question as it did for the two-dimensional. Um, do I want to relocate where X and Y are? I'm going to say no to this only because I knew it was going to ask this question and I did it before I got to this message. So I'm going to type the letter N for no, then OK. So once I select OK now, uh, I'll try not to talk uh, through the process. Um, and I'll also, uh, what's going to happen, it's going to move down and it's going to step its way across until it makes contact with the part and then just kind of move up and relocate itself up and over uh, the part. Uh, the process here, um, just to show you what kind of pressure is being applied to it, I will lay my hand down under there for it to walk up and over top of my finger, uh, just so you can get a, a feeling for what type of pressure is being applied to this. So I will say okay to this and uh, and I'll be trying to be silent until I stop it. I think that's where you usually hear the words, please don't try this at home. So I'm going to stop it now. Um, basically, that's what it does. It, it moves, um, just scans, and goes over, and you see right now the Y value is, is at that 0.01. That is our scan resolution. Uh, that is how far uh, it is stepping over. So if we had our scan resolution set 0.005, 5 thousandths, well, the Y value right now would be reading 0.005. So that is the reason that uh, this closer together those lines are, or that step over is, the uh, smoother your finished uh, model or your finished scan is going to be. Um, but it also is going to take a lot longer because it has to make, in this case, if we set it from 10,000 to 5,000, it has to make twice as many passes um, over top of the, uh, the part and over top of the area for it to finish. Um, so I am uh, going to uh, pretend we're on a cooking show right now and kind of pull the cake out of the oven and uh, show you what we ended up with. Um, so the file that uh, I have uh, that was scanned is on a thumb drive. And it's this file right here is my scan. It is a ShopBot uh, part file. So I'm gonna open that up uh, just so we could see what, what has been recorded. Basically just a series of M3 moves with an X, Y, Z value. Uh, so we can see the uh, first value of Y is zero. If we scroll through here, we see 10 thousandths and 20 thousandths, 30 and so on as it is making its pass uh, with the varying height in the Z value. So that is uh, basically 
the, the, this is the model um, of what we're seeing. What we need to do now is take and get this model into VCarve Pro. Um, there is a gadget out there that I've never tried. I'm not quite sure how it works. Uh, too much, I'm sure we could figure it out, but I'm not going to get into that right now uh, because we have a built-in utility in the ShopBot control software under Tools and Probe to Surface Translator. That is the uh, letter uh, T, so um, Tools T or TT. And um, there, there's a little bit of a story here. Uh, you see this is uh, GGI. Um, uh, <laughs> A lot of people wonder what GGI is. Uh, this was a program that was created by uh, Bruce uh, many, many, many years ago. Um, and it was created because, uh, for those that may or may not know, uh, there was a ShopBot employee there called Grant Bailey. Um, and Grant had this uh, great idea uh, that he presented to uh, Bruce. And Bruce said, you know, Grant, that is a great idea. So let's call that GGI for Grant's great idea. And uh, the Probe to Surface Translator now exists. So the first thing that we need to do is open up a ShopBot probe file. And that is basically just opening up the uh, part file, uh, the cutting file that uh, we just uh, duplicated, or I just did uh, last night. So running that scan and selecting open um, brings that in here and we can see that as a grayscale. Uh, at this point, uh, what I wanna do is be able to save that as a DXF surface. Uh, so basically it's like an STL file. It's going to create the same type of uh, code that an STL would be, only it is a DXF surface. Clicking save, give it a name and click save. I'm just going to replace it, overwrite what I have. Takes just a little bit to generate that. When it is done, I think it tells us that we're done here in this lower white bar. And we are done. So we now have a DXF file that has a 3D surface to it. We can now open up our VCarve Pro. I just did a new, just so we can see that there is a fresh convert. Oh, I want to save no. Save that. Now, so I am going to change the model size uh, down uh, closer to what I had scanned it in. So the X was two inches, you know, two and a half, so the 2.75. And then go to the modeling tab up to the import as a component, a 3D model. And there is the MyScanDXF that we just created. Selecting open. Now brings that into VCarve Pro. I am able to change the size, uh, this around, relocate. And this is what I was talking about with the Z. Um, I could uh, bring that down just a little bit more uh, into the uh, material if I wanted to. Say okay, and there is uh, Donald uh, brought in. And um, again, the step over, these lines that we're seeing here is the step over, the 10,000s, the same type of lines that we would see if we were to cut this with a uh, eighth inch ball nose and had a, a bigger step over. So the closer that step over is, the smoother uh, this is going to be. So on Thursday, uh, we're gonna take a look at how we could create uh, tool paths uh, for this. We're also gonna take a look at uh, a little bit of Spire to see how we could uh, crop out some of the parts uh, that we don't want and uh, to be able to smooth it out as well. So uh, again, we are over here in Aspire and uh, just a little bit of work in Aspire. We can see that uh, it is looking much smoother and a little bit cleaner uh, than what uh, it was originally had in VCarve Pro. All right, uh, well, we are uh, about done for the day here. Everyone have a good day and uh, we'll see you either tomorrow or Thursday or both.